We have the wisdom that can disciple a city. We have the grace that humbles states. We are the hands that can heal the country. We are the songs that can lift up the nations. We are the sermons that can strengthen the world. We are a congregation taking ministry beyond the wall. soul has been anchored in the Lord. My soul is anchored Billows may roll, breakers may dash, I shall not sway, because he's holding me fast. So dark the day, clouds in the sky, but I know it's alright, because Jesus is now. God, we pray now for preaching power. We pray, God, that you would crown our heads with wisdom and knowledge, clarity of mind, sharpness of speech. Let us clearly articulate, God, your word, that we might stand on your principles and come to know you in a very real way. Oh, God, how we bless you, how we thank you, how we celebrate you. It's in Jesus Christ, the Savior's name, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And amen. Standing across this building, if you can, turn with me to the gospel, Matthew, the seventh chapter. The gospel according to Matthew, the seventh chapter. I want to begin at verse 13. We will climax and conclude at verse 14. The gospel according to Matthew, the seventh chapter, y'all, that's in the front of the back. That's in the front of the back. If you have it, say amen. amen. And this is what the word of the Lord says. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad. And its gate is wide for the many who choose that way but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it I want to talk this morning on the subject there has to be another way there has to be another way for the grass withereth and the flower fades but the word of our Lord shall stand forever there has to be another way the last four or five weeks that I stood and declared the word of God here at this house I preach specifically about blessings and sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting. And I, I, I preached it intensely and intently so that we would receive and understand and appreciate the blessings that God has in store for us. Because the reality of it is, it does not matter how many Bibles you can pack, how many scriptures you can quote. It does not matter what side of the tracks you were ba born and raised on. The reality of it is, is that if you cannot see the blessing or the benefit of your labor, you won't labor. 
if you don't see your potential, you won't strive to reach that end. So I took four or five weeks to painstakingly labor about being and receiving a blessing, having God to shower blessings down upon your life. And now that you can see what the end can look like, now that you can see what you can achieve and possess, now let me teach you what has to happen in order for those blessings to come your way. What has to happen is you have to be saved. Salvation has to come your way. In June of 2008, the Pew Reform on Religion and Public Life released this statistical finding via U.S. religious landscape, and it surveyed some 35,000 Americans. And the question that was on the table is, within that Christian, within those religious sects, how many ways or different ways can a man or woman receive salvation? One would think because of your religious positions and each religion, one would think that there would be a standard of teaching that all of those religions would go by. If it was nothing but their own, you would think within that particular set, they would have one belief of their own. But it was earth shattering, it was shaking, it gave me pause to read the statistical results of those 35,000 Americans who were asked the question, how many different ways can one receive salvation? Here are some percentages I want you to listen to. The Hindu faith had 89% of their people felt that there were multiple ways. The Buddhists had 86% of theirs. The Jewish faith was 82, the Catholics 79. The historical black churches, 59% of them said that there were multiple ways to receive salvation. The Muslim faith said 56% of them said that there were multiple ways to receive salvation. You know, those responses I found to be quite interesting. Because we stand and we teach and we preach the word of God. But I, I really feel that we have done an injustice. We've done an inservice to the people of God. Because we have not emphatically stated and with proof through the text shown that there is one and only way to receive salvation. Now I know some of you may have your different political opinions. You may have your own religious beliefs. But all I got to stand on is the word of God. I can't go to the left. I can't go to the right. All I have is the word of God. And, and the Bible declares that, that, that there is only one way unto salvation. Now, when we begin to look at words like salvation and, 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 and things of that nature that has a, a specific biblical meaning, we have to really understand what those meanings are in order to really appreciate what we have access to. Salvation, in general terms, refers to deliverance or rescue from some undesirable state or condition. It is the deliverance from or the rescue from some undesirable state and or condition. And those two words, deliverance and rescue, suggest to us that we, would not, we cannot do it on our own because if we could, we wouldn't be in the situation or the shape that we're in. So it requires a, a higher power to deliver us or to rescue us from whatever undesirable state or condition we find ourselves in. But then more significantly for the Christian faith, it refers to the grace of God in delivering his people from the bondage to sin and condemnation and transferring us to the kingdom of his beloved son and giving us eternal life. I know I said a whole lot, so I'm going to say it one more time. In the Christian faith, it refers to the grace of God 
in delivering his people from the bondage to sin and condemnation and transferring us into the kingdom of his holy son and then giving us eternal life. Yo, that's what salvation is all about. It's not about cars. It's not about suits and houses. It's not about your financial status. Salvation is about being rescued, being delivered and set free from the bondage of sin and condemnation, transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son and given eternal life. That is salvation. That, my brothers, that, my sisters, is what we, the ecclesia, what we, the body of Christ, that is what we hang our hat on. That's why we keep showing up Sunday after Sunday. That's why we keep coming up week after week because we want to receive from God the instruction that's needed to be delivered from sin. You know, according to Jesus, he declares in John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus makes it, he makes it a, a declaration, he makes an imperative statement that I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way that you can get to my daddy except you come through me. Jesus said, and, and in order to get to my daddy, that means you got to step correct. You just can't come to him any kind of old way. He says, the only way that you have access to my father is you got to come through me. I, I, I likened it this morning, and, and I'll give it again, that if, uh, if somebody knows John Jr., and say, hey, I'm, I'm going over to holler at your daddy. He going to say, no, uh, can I help you with something? Uh -huh. He say, what is it that you need to holler at my daddy about? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't know you, and I don't think he knows you. So before you step to my daddy, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to know what it is that you want to holler at him about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to make, that's how we say that to Willie Mesa. Yeah. I, I need to know what it is that you want to talk to my daddy about and and after he is made to feel comfortable with you and your motives and intent if he feels comfortable with you then he says all right now i'll take you to my dad he's saying now i i'm not gonna just let you come any kind of way and roll up on my daddy not knowing what your intent and purposes are likewise jesus say you're not gonna step to my father just any kind of way except you go through me. That's, 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 that's city gas version. You're not going to just get to, to the Father any kind of way except you go through Jesus. He says, now look, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father Regardless of how many scriptures you can quote, regardless of how long you've been in church, regardless of how good looking you are, regardless of your nice shape, no one can step to the Father except you go through the Son. Well, 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 let's see. Well, let's see now. Let's see. He says the way to life is difficult and narrow, and only a few find it. Let me help somebody with something. Again, I feel that we've done a disservice to the church body. Because for whatever reason, we made people feel that once they come down that aisle, give a hand to the preacher, get dunked in that little water, that their life will be a bed of roses. That is a lie. The scripture says, when I would do good, evil was present on every hand. When I tried to do the right thing, I found myself doing the wrong thing. Look what happens in Matthew 7, verse 13, primary text. He says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Let me finish it. 
the highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who choose, underscore choose, choose that way. Verse 14, but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Can I unpack that passage for you for just a second? <clears throat> you, me, us's can only enter the kingdom of God through the narrow gate. He goes on to describe to describe the paths that we have the choice of making. He says the highway to hell yes. is broad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it in perspective. Mm. The highway to hell is 59. Uh -huh. <laughs> East Texas Freeway. Four lanes going this way and four lanes going that way. You can get there high, house on ever you want to. You get on 59, you can mash on it. <laughs> Got access lanes, access roads. All up and down 59, so just in case you decide tomorrow you want to get on 59 and go to hell, you can jump on that and go. But then he says, but the gateway to life is very narrow. Now look, 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 look at these two descriptors that he used. The highway and the gate. The highway you can drive a Mack truck up a highway. You can take an oversized load on the highway. But the gate, sometimes you got to turn the ease through the gate. You just can't go in the gate just any kind of old way. But watch this. The highway. You jump out there on 59, you just mash it. Just go for what you got. Make a hoop that look fast. No obstructions. No hindrances. You just go. But when you go to the gate. Yeah. 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 Very narrow. That's Hirsch Road, y'all. Hirsch Road. 59 to hell. Hirsch to heaven. Fifty nine. You just flying. You out there going as fast as you want. And, 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 and let me tell you something. If you ever jumped on Highway 59 at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll realize you're not the only one out there at 3 in the morning. If you jump on Highway 59 at midnight, high noon, you are never the only one on Highway 59. The Bible says that many choose that way. But if you get on Hirsch Road, <laughs> There are times when you are the only one, when you are the only one on Hirsch Road. Nobody else is traveling that way. On Highway 59, they got all kinds of lights all up and down the road. So you can drive 59 with your lights off. You, you can drive Highway 59 with your lights off. But when you're on Hirsch Road, you got to keep the lights on. Because there are often times that you are the only one. On the highway, on, on 59, they always got road crews on 59. Yeah. Brother Lionel, they got road crews because they don't want you to mess up your car. Yeah. They don't want you to hit no potholes. So they always got folk out there fixing the road. So why? You can drive fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Curse yeah. road, you got potholes. Yeah. Stop signs. Yeah. Speed bumps. Yeah. All sorts of things to slow you down. And cause you to have to take your time and travel. The Bible said that a whole lot of folk choose to get on 59. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't many folk choose to travel down Hirsch. Because when you get out here on Hirsch between Tidwell and Law Copy, you pass a funeral, you pass a you pass a graveyard. There are things along Hirsch that you see that reminds you that you got a path to travel and there's going to be some things along the path that's not necessarily going to be comfortable. 
Oh, I want to. I really, I really want to cap out there for just a second. There, that we got to understand that that just because you can get on 59 and run fast, does not not does not mean that that's the way that you should always travel. I was remembering yesterday morning. I was leaving. I had to go out of town a little ways, and on the way out of town, I looked at the inbound traffic. Full lane highway on the inbound, four lanes coming the other direction. It was a parking lot. I made up my mind then that I wasn't coming that way on my way back. I made up my mind then that I was going to find me another route to travel on the way back based on what I saw on my way out. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? You got to understand that, that, that you can't always go the same way that everybody else is going because everybody else is not trying to get where God is sending you. And you also have to understand that we make decisions now based on what we see so that we don't run into those roadblocks on our way back. On my way home, on my way back, when I got back closer into town, I realized, I said, oh, don't forget. Uh -huh. yeah. What you saw on your way out. Yeah. So I went another route. Yeah. Went a little bit further around. Uh -huh. All right. Had to deviate a little bit greater distance. But I did not want yeah. to get caught in that traffic and hold me up from the things that I was trying to get done. I don't need somebody to understand. You need to understand this. Just because everybody else is getting out there flying, don't mean that you need to get out there flying. Watch this. Speed limit on 59 North is what? No, it ain't. It's 70. Is it 75? It's, it's 77. It's, it's fast. Watch this. Somebody gonna pass you. Speed limit 70? Somebody's going to pass you. Watch, watch. I'm going to say that. They, they didn't feel like that. Like that. You on your way to hell? Somebody's going to pass you on the way to hell. Somebody trying to get there before you get there. Well, that's 59. Tell, tell your neighbor, I'm going home. I'm going by Hearst today. I'm going down Hearst today. Going down Hearst Road today. Mm -hmm. The highway to hell is broad. And many choose to go that way. Y'all, we make a conscious decision which path we're going to travel. But he then comes and he says, but the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road, y'all, hear me here, hear me here, because I don't want you to leave out of here thinking that you're supposed to skip to the loo, my darling, through life. The Bible says that the road, this narrow path, is very difficult. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got to smile at folk who you know can't stand you. You got to wrap your arms around folk who you know trying to stab you in the back. You got to give to folk that you know just stole from you. The path is not easy. But it's the path that God says we have to travel in order to get where he wants us to go. Yes, sir. Let me just give me, let me give you just a few testament, test, testimonies here. Peter said that salvation is only found in Jesus. Acts 4 and 12, Peter says, y'all know Peter. Yeah. Peter was that brother who didn't play. Yeah. You step to Peter in correct, he cut you. Yeah. Peter cut a ear off. Yeah. Boom. Hey, hey, you shouldn't have come at me like that. That's Peter. Yeah. But Peter, even with his quick temper, Peter says, Acts 4 and 12, there is, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Yeah. Peter said, there is not enough. Peter said, I was with him. Yeah. I walked with Jesus. I was there with him. And Peter said, God has not given us another name under heaven by which one can be saved. Comerica Bank can't save you. 
Wells Fargo can't save you. Wood Forest, Frost, none of them can save you. Your car, your house, your good looks, your man, your woman, none of them can save you. Your job, your children, none of them can save you except you go through the sun. Well, that's what Peter said. But then John came behind it. John said in 1 John 2, 23, anyone who denies the son does not have the father. But then he says, but anyone who acknowledges the son has the father also. You know, for those, for those, you know, I, I, I believe in the father, but I ain't feeling that Jesus thing. Y'all, all I got is the Bible. That's it. That's it. I'm not. I'm not smart enough to outthink God. I'm not smart enough to think beyond Him. So all I got to stand on is the Word, and the Word say that if you deny the Son, you also deny the Father. I understand the triune. I understand the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I've been to school a day or two. I understand that. But the Bible says that if you deny the the Son, you deny Daddy. Yeah. That's it. That's it. But then he comes right behind it and says, but anyone who acknowledges the son also has the father. So for those of you who are sitting there, well, I can, I can get with God, but I can't get with Jesus. You need to get some body, get the word. Or say you, gotta, you, you can't have one without the other one. But then, so you got Peter. You got John. But then, what does Paul say? Well, Paul says, those who don't obey the gospel of Jesus will experience the vengeance upon his return. I know we have gotten to become a church age now. Church age people now, we want to hear, click three times, go to heaven. We want to, we want to hear, name it and claim it. We want to hear prosperity. We want, but y'all, there is a vengeance. There is a, another side of God. There is a side of God where God don't take that foolishness. God ain't playing with us any longer. Look what he says in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7 and 8. He says in 2 Thessalonians, uh, verse 1, chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, he says, And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. He says, God's going to give you rest. For all the hell you've been through, God's going to give you rest. For all the lies that were told on you, God's going to give you rest. For all the sacrifices that you made, God's going to give you rest. For all of the effort that you made with the best of intentions, even when you fell short, God's going to give you rest. He says, but he will come with mighty angels. He's going to come with mighty angels. Angels. And verse 8 says, in flaming fire, he's going to bring judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I came to give you rest and I came that vengeance might be on those who refuse to obey. Yeah, I know, you know, but some of y'all say, I wish he'd have been preaching on money again. <laughs> well, you, let me just tell you something. That money text, don't think I won't go back there, but that money text, don't, don't, that five weeks of preaching, that don't happen for you if you don't get this. Yeah. Showing you the end result. Now I got to back up and teach you how to get to the end. Yeah. And the getting to the end begins with salvation. Yeah. Begin, getting to the end begins with you having a relationship and fellowship with the son so that you can have access to the daddy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> if, the, if these statistics, if these statistics are correct, 59%, 86%, 89%, 87%. If those statistics are correct, that there are multiple paths to salvation, who lied? Did Jesus lie when he said that he is the only way? Did the apostles and the disciples lie who said that there is only one way to have access to the Father? Was Jesus' death on Calvary for nothing if there are multiple paths to salvation? Did he give his life for nothing? We could have just wrote a check. 
We could have sang a little louder. We could have played a little harder. I could have preached a little longer if that's all it took. The Bible says that except you go through the sun. You cannot get to the Father. Did the apostles suffer for nothing? Y'all do realize that the apostles, they, they suffer too. Can I just give y'all a brief snapshot Come on. of Paul's CV? Come on. Can, can I give you just a brief snapshot of Paul's resume? Listen to what Paul said. You know, I can just imagine this came after he got through listening to folk who complaining about their situation. Mm -hmm. Well, they know I've been doing this all this time and they don't really, they don't appreciate me. Lord, I've been, I've been showing up and I've been the only one that nobody's showing up to do anything but me. I think Paul just said, you know what, wait, wait. I, I, I'm about tired of that, that story. Let, let, you think you've been through something? Let me just run you down and let me just tell you just a little bit of what I've been through. Paul says, in 2 Corinthians 11, y'all ain't making this up, I ain't that good. In 2 Corinthians 11, 23, Paul says, let me just tell you what I've been through. He says, but whatever they dare to boast about, I'm talking like a fool again. I dare to boast about it too. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but he said, but I serve him far more than they have. He says, I have worked harder, but put in prison more often. Been whipped times without number. And I faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. He says, I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. Paul says, you think you've been through something? Let me tell you what I've been through. Paul says, but I ain't done yet. He says, I have worked hard and long. I've endured many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty. I've often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without enough clothing to even keep me warm. He said, then besides all this, I still have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. And he says, my concern for all of these churches who is weak without my feeling their weaknesses. Who is led astray and I don't burn with anger. Paul said, I've been through all of this. Yes. And you still go astray? Yeah. I've been through all of this and you're still weak? Yeah. Paul said, you ain't been through what I've yeah. been through and I still give myself for you. Yeah. Let, me, let me just help somebody. That little phrase we like to throw out there, salvation is free. <laughs> Ask Paul. Yeah. Ask Jesus. That's Peter. Yeah. That's John. The price was paid. Yes. May not have come out of your pocket. Oh, but the price was paid. Yeah. Yeah. The house we live in, my daughter may say, oh, it was free. No, baby, daddy worked. Mama worked. Huh? You may live in it without paying a note, but somebody paid the note. For, you know, for those who think everything is free, no, it's not free. A price yes. was paid. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's why those who are owners make sure you take care of what they work for. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're just not going to let you roll up in their house and do what you want to do. You know, they got the white carpet. They got the white couch and the white chair. And you think you're going to get through more in the yard and come in there and plop your... You done lost your mind. First of all, you're not going to get access to that room. And if you do, they got more plastic on them chair. You're going to stick to them before you mess them up. I used to say, Mama, can you get this plastic off these seats? You try to fall asleep. Mother, you know about that, don't you? You just try to fall asleep, your face will stick to the chair. Some of y'all go home now and take our plastic off. Y'all go to the house now. We buying that plastic in Jesus' name. Get you some Scotch Guard. Get you some Scotch Guard. Get that. Get rid of. Enjoy what God has blessed you with. Ah, you know what? We just talk about that's that's the, the that's the guest china. I'm that's my china. I'm eating out of it. Them the guest glasses. I'm give me some water out that glass. Yes, sir. I don't know where that came from, but that would just come up out my spirit. <laughs> Giving me that styrofoam talking about that's the good child. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Why? Why did the disciples go through that martyrdom if it wasn't necessary? They went through all that they went through because they had an assignment on their life. And their assignment was to make sure that they shared the good news, the gospel, with you and I so that we might eat, inherit yeah. Yeah. eternal life. Thank you, God. Stop minimizing yeah. salvation. Amen. Your salvation, if it don't mean nothing to nobody else, it ought to mean something to you. Look at it like this. Hmm. Um, yo, hoopty. And I use the term hoopty can be whatever you want it to be, you know. So don't trip. Yo, hoopty is yo, hoopty. Nobody else will appreciate and or take care of your hoopty better than you because they don't see the value in your hoopty. Nobody sees the value of your salvation because they don't know what you went through to get it. They don't know the pain that you endured to get from God what you have. They don't know the pain behind your anointing. They don't know the anguish behind the place where God has brought you from. They just see you right now. But baby, if they had been with you, if they had walked with you, if they had sat with you, if they would listen to your story. Yes, yeah. They would understand why you're not letting them play with your salvation. You're not letting them play around with your anointing because you a price was paid for that. So writing a check won't get you salvation. Singing in the choir won't get you salvation. Preaching behind this desk won't get you salvation. Working those cameras, working those doors won't get you salvation. It takes a relationship with the Son in order to get to the Father. Now, let me, let me just, uh, I'm, I'm through. Let me help somebody with this. You should have the desire to have a relationship with the Father. You should have a desire yes, to have a relationship with the Father. Yeah. Because um, Zadar, come here. Come here, Zadar. I'm going to take care of you. Come here. His daddy said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't know if he said, oh, Lord, because of me or he don't know, Lord, because of what he going to do. 
I want to be friends with Zadok. Mm -hmm. This is my buddy. I want to be friends with Zadok. We have a friendship. We have a relationship. We hang out together. We roll together. This my boy. He, he said, I like Uncle John. We, we roll and we hang out together. Yeah, yeah. Zadok has resources and means, mm -hmm. but he don't have nearly what his daddy has. It's cool. Being in friendship and fellowship with Zadok. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have access to what he has. Yeah. But if I really want the blessings of the Anique family, yeah. I got I to gotta go through the son, yeah. show, myself, show myself reliable and responsible to the son, which will then give me access yeah. to the father. Some of y'all missing it. Some of you missing it. Some of you missing it. Even though he is special and kind, don't settle for just the son. Your desire should be to have a relationship and access to the father. The Bible says that we are heirs with him. We're, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with the son. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I want what daddy got. You can trip if you want to. Y'all said, oh, that ain't what the Bible said. What, what, what does the Bible say then? You tell me what the Bible say other than that I should have the desire to have what the father has. If, if he didn't want me to have what he had, he would not have said that I am an heir of his. Yeah. That I'm a joint heir with him. He said that you get to, he would have said, if I was supposed to have what the daddy had, he would have said, you get to enjoy the blessings of the son. He said, I have access to be an heir of the father. But in order to get to the father, I got to go through the son. Now, Zadok, look at this, what I need you to do for me. We pretty good. We cool. I, when you get back there with your daddy, tell him your buddy, old John down there, pretty cool cat, tell him you want him to come over and hang out with your son. Go on back there and see what he say. <laughs> Keep thinking about it, ain't it? <laughs> Boy, you better talk. I done had you down here for five minutes that set my sermon up and you go back there and lay on his bed. <laughs> Boy, you better talk for me. Say, he all right? Give him access, daddy. That's what Jesus does. Jesus goes to his daddy and say, daddy, she's all right. Daddy, he's all right. Give him access. If you want access, you better learn to get to the sun if you want access, you got to learn to be obedient to the word. If you want access. I'm done. Zayn, you done messed me up, boy. I'm going to talk to Zayn next time. Y'all listen. Seriously? You got to have a desire to have access to the Father. You can't get to the Father except you go through the Son. Except you begin to call on the name Jesus. Except we begin to turn from our wicked ways. Except we begin to hear from heaven and do change our thinking, change our thought process, which will change our behaviors and change the things that we do. Except we begin to hear from God. We will remain in captivity where we are. We will remain in bondage. And you will only be able to sit and watch the others be blessed. You've never seen a, a person enslaved who's, 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 who's really blessed and wealthy. I'm talking wealthy. They're in bondage. But when they are given their emancipation, when they are given their freedom, they remember the bondage that they were in and then they say, you know what? I don't ever want to go back to that. I don't ever 
want to go back to that which I've been delivered and set free from. And I'm not going to allow you to take me back there. Listen, please, no one leave the building. Every head is bowed and every eye closed. God, we bless your name today. God, we thank you for giving us time to just share your word. God, I pray that we begin to see the significance and the importance of salvation. That we don't take it lightly. That we set that as our priority. To be in fellowship with the Son. And through the fellowship that we have with the Son, God, that we are given access to you. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. And we thank you.